<laughs> Welcome, everybody. Thanks for um, being here in Aspen and Alabama Icon. Uh, anything that you want to know about um, marketing ideas, um, tips, strategies. Um, <laughs> uh, we've been uh, stripping a little bit. There must be a lot of high traffic going on on uh, uh, the internet today. So we're so glad that you could join us. Um, we've got um, uh, five amazing agents that are joining me today and uh, just want you to get to know them and learn some great tools or strategies to put into your toolbox. Um, so we're going to start with Clarence because he is our veteran icon. And uh, Clarence, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Jenny. It's How fun to be here with everybody. You're the ultimate icon. So um, tell, tell us a little bit about what, what is icon? What does that even mean? Well, it's uh, definitely an awesome thing uh, for our company that gives us an opportunity to earn our stocks back. But above all that, it's an opportunity for us to do what we're doing today. And that's getting out, serving and helping our agents. And that's part of, you know, getting the Icon Award is to get out and serve and help others. But it's an opportunity that we get 16,000 or that opportunity to have 16,000 of our stock given to us in our cap. So I don't pay. I'm, I'm literally they're paying me to work here. To yeah. be a part of EXP. Isn't and what cool? I think for all of us, we can say that, right? Like the company pays us to work. Literally. For literally. So. literally. So I'm grateful for that. Boy, I tell you, if I had this eight years ago, uh, you would probably see me in Malibu doing this Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you on your surfboard. <laughs> I've been on the I've been outside relaxing. So it's a great opportunity to really. Um, and I think it's the only company that really gives you that. So I appreciate that greatly. Well, and this is your third time, right? Yeah, well, it's going to be. Yes. So I'm hitting my third one this year. So, the, yes, I'm excited. That's really excited. very exciting. And uh, Clarence is um, in Birmingham, Alabama. So um, uh, we are lucky enough to get to work in the same market. Yep. And uh, so we also want to introduce to you um, Aileen Fountain. Aileen, welcome. Is she here? Hey, Aileen, she may not be able to hear me. Okay. I'm going to. I <laughs> she said I can't hear you. <laughs> no, okay, so we've got um, uh, Gabrielle. Um, Gabrielle, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jenny. So, so happy the day that you make Icon. Oh, my God. I was so excited. And I, know, I, I came in like, I, I was like, oh, did, did I hit it? Did I hit it? Exactly. <laughs> it's just so fun. I can tell you that um, as an agent, the whole award just totally motivates you to get out there and talk to one more person. Chad Beasley, who is um, in the waiting room right now, when he comes on, he's just like, hey, I'm out there talking to people um, and going places and showing houses I hadn't been to in years. So I think we want to hit that goal. So um, it pushes you. It pushes you harder to, to. I mean, it's like, let's face it, you know, we're all here. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to be amongst the greats here uh, at EXP, but we're all, you know, cappers, you know, we hit our cap every year, but what, how great is it to be able to push further and be able to get that cap back in true, what we call certificates that we can cash. And so, you know, that's just a wonderful opportunity. To no, it is for sure. And um, so I've got a, a question and I've got Chad joining now from the waiting room um, as Aileen is, is trying to come back with us. Hey, Kyra. Um, I want to ask for y'all. Thanks for being here, Chad. Um, hey, yeah. Glad to be here. How did you get here? Like, what did you do? What are what are some of your favorite lead generation systems? Well, you know, most of my business after 23 years of doing this is, is based off of um, just name recognition, presence in the community, repeat referral business. Um so that's where the majority of mine comes from. Um, you know, I, I do um, do a lot of things to promote awareness, but it's in the community that I work in primarily just to keep my name in front of those people all the time so that hopefully I'm the first person they think of if they want to buy or sell a house. Right. And Gabby, what, how about you? What are your um, you know, favorite lead generation system? I don't necessarily use, use a lead generation system per se, but my lead generation is relationships. Um, so I pride myself on building and keeping and cultivating those relationships. 
I do a lot of events. And so from those events, you know, I gain, gain clients, you know, that way and just building those relationships in a relaxed atmosphere environment. I love to have a good time. And so just building those relationships is what I focus on. No, not, and I guess you could call it a lead gen, um, because it is generating a business, but um, I don't necessarily purchase uh, any leads. It's just strictly relationships. Like Chad said, uh, uh, your name recognition, um, you know, being a professional, uh, building that rapport with people, having a good reputation and getting referrals. Well, it, in other words, what Gabby's trying to say is <laughs> she's parting her way to Icon. <laughs> I was about to ask what, what kind of events. Yes. I need to know more oh, about man, this. Man, so here's my cool. invitation. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, Chad. <laughs> She does. You have you host some amazing events and uh, you do it all throughout the year. Sometimes they'll be at your house. Sometimes they'll be at just like, you know, top venues in town. And so that's really kind of how you keep your relationships going. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. We were bombed this year that we cannot do our annual Derby Day event. Um, but, you know, hey. But yeah, we're just, you know, we just do events. You know, we look forward to those. We even have people reaching out. Hey, you know, are you you know doing this? Are you doing that? Or when is your event? And they're so they're becoming accustomed to those and they look forward to those events. And so that's what we do. Right. No, I love that. So um, Clarence, give us some uh, ideas on you use a couple of lead generation systems. Definitely. definitely. So we, we do. So still, even though we use a lot of systems, a lot of our business still is spear. So we're still heavily involved with uh, staying in touch with our past clients, happy anniversary cards, happy Mother's Day information, sending out videos, keeping them updated with the market. Um, so we're still engaged heavily with our clients. Our motto is service before the sale. So we like the wow at each point. Who did I get that from? You ever heard somebody say that? <laughs> So we work hard about that. We really do focus on that. We do invest in online generation of like uh, pay per click. We do focus on that, but it's still with the intent of building the relationship, not just selling them a product. And so we want to focus on engaging that relationship and taking it from meeting them online as a stranger into in our sphere and continue to refer business to us. Um, but we take care of them first before asking for anything. We give first. Well, and that's true. And you have like. Um I would probably say both of you, Gabrielle and Clarence, have really stepped up your Facebook games this year. It's got such a um, polish to it, such a just um, dynamic storytelling, um, just um, iconic, actually. I mean, that's the word that comes to mind. I mean, that's what your image that you're putting out there, the brand kind of that you're putting out there. Um, and Chad's with him being so relationship based, his is, you know, um, uh, he's communicating a lot on Facebook, you know, with uh, with his people who will always ask a funny question and <laughs> get a hundred you know, comments on it. Uh, so it's just fun to see how everybody has their own style. And, um, you know, it just works for everyone. And Clarence, you've got a team. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that um, uh, Gabrielle and Chad are both pretty much single agents with, you know, with some um, resources. I know Jennifer's helping out. And, sure. um, we have support. Yes. Yes. Jamea, Jamea, right. She's now, I've just um, hired her too. So she's our common denominator here. She's <laughs> awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I know Gabby, you've got somewhere you've got to be any other tips that you want to share or anything that you you've seen. I know that you've been actually producing a lot of content for new agents. Yeah. And so, you know, again, just, you know, and I wish, you know, it's like hindsight is 2020. Um, you know, when I started in real estate, um, I didn't have really anywhere to go or, or anywhere to turn. It's kind of like you just learn by trial and error. And so one of the things that I am focused on as well with my business is to help uplift and bring in, uh, bring up new agents uh, that are in the business um, and hopefully be a light and be a beacon uh, for those uh, guys that are coming in uh, behind me. I know, Chad, I am just honored to be in your presence. I have seen oh, come on. <laughs> your boards everywhere for years. And so this is just amazing for me. So, yeah, I appreciate it, you guys. 
Oh no, it is awesome. <laughs> you, you're a light everywhere you go. You always smile, and that's really that's that's your trademark. Is your smile? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I was just looking a minute ago. Both both of you guys, Clarence and and Gabby, y'all. I mean, the, the smile just taking over the screen. <laughs> okay, right. I'm, I'm over here a little self conscious. Oh, but... cut it out. <laughs> I'm I'm gleaming from Gabby. We just she, said, she has that glow. I just glow with her. <laughs> you know? And, and I was gonna say that too. The cool thing I love about what and I, I know I'm switching gears, but Gabby, your parties are always with a purpose too. So they're always giving, and that's the cool oh, thing yeah. about it. And I think that's a lot of us. And I know you, Jenny, and I know just recently hanging out with Chad. We everybody has a servant heart of like really wanting to help and give first. And so that's one of the big pieces, I think, when people are afraid to make a call or saying, reaching out to your spirit, like what to say, come from contribution, like just checking on people, even in today, how are you doing? How is your family doing? And you're not even trying to get a sale. You know, a lot of times people are taught to call, you know, you know, somebody looking to buy, you know, giving this script. And it's not always about a script. Sometimes it's just, how are you doing? How I is totally your family? Agree. And here's a note card to say, I'm thinking of you. That's it. That's the script, you know, and being authentic about that. Right. Genuinely caring. Yeah. About yeah, what the, the, right now. I think, you know, the authenticity is is the key in, in all of it. And I think that's kind of the, the, the common denominator I'm hearing here is everybody just hey, being yourself and being a, a, a good human being and taking care of people first, right. um, you know, serving our clients and our community. And um, the rest of it just sort of falls into place if you if you do that right. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. right. So um, one or two questions more for Gabby because she's got a big day. <laughs> I, ha I have a senior, guys, this week. I'm, I'm busy, mom. I'm, I'm emotional. <laughs> well, it's been a hypersensitive time, you know, emotionally for all of us lately. Yes, it um, has. So I'm um, with you. My daughter's graduating too, or as she tells us, she has graduated. Oh, I we haven't had a ceremony <laughs> yet, but she not, she's not a senior anymore. She's a freshman in college. She's a well, freshman she's in college. Same, Look, I give her a piece of advice, and then probably ten years, she's like, "Well, I wish I was a freshman in high school." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, you know, Gabrielle, you have um, got a TV show that you've been working on for a while, and so I want everybody to kind of know that too. Like, um, you got a lot of high-profile stuff. Um, uh, that's kind of who you are, and um, tell us about your TV show. So um, me and my partner, we have a show. It's called House Heist. It can be a tongue twister. And uh, he's an investor and I'm a realtor. So we're a match made in heaven. And so <laughs> we just really, our show is designed to educate and, and teach people about real estate from, a, from an investment vehicle. So real estate investments, um, you know, how to purchase properties for your, your regular, you know, seller who's looking to you know upgrade or fix their home up you know what are some of the things that they can do to spruce their spruce their properties up and so that's really what our show is about uh we throw in a little bit of entertainment with it and so we were in the middle of filming uh for season three when all of the COVID 19 happened but you can check us out on youtube at house heist and we will be coming for season three on abc 3340 here uh pretty soon hopefully Yay. Well, that cool. is fantastic. Thank any, you. Any, anybody who's striving to um, uh, have a thriving business or reach icon level, any last words of encouragement or tip? Um, the number one thing for me that really helped me is to know your numbers. Um, I know a lot of times we get so busy in business and we know that we're doing well and we're pushing and we're trucking along. But um, I know for me, I can speak for myself and Clarence has been a, a, a great resource in helping me really slow down and really understand my numbers and understand where I need to be and how many appointments I need to go on. Um, not every top agent is so strict on their numbers. I'm one of them. Um, and so just really slowing down and understanding my numbers. And that helps me to really push and drive in um, a little bit harder to reach that iconic status. I love it. Well, <laughs> you did it and you're on track to do it again this year. And uh, so proud of you. So proud to be in business with you. And uh, 
Thank you. Good luck with everything with your daughter. Thank and, you. Uh, we appreciate you so much. If you want to reach out to um, Gabrielle, please do that. It's Gabrielle Henderson. Um, you'll see her on Facebook. Send her a message. She's happy to always answer any questions. Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny, for being such a light. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Love you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Love you. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> So I'm going to bring in um, Angelo now. And Angelo, um, as he is hitting, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, man, I'm disappointed. I thought he was going to be on a boat. <laughs> I thought he was going to be in the boat. <laughs> <from the background. laughs> well, and I feel so bad. We were having technical difficulties with um, Aileen, and uh, she's not with us right now. But you work, Angelo, in Aileen's market, right? Close by? Yep. So, um uh, I, that would be two good perspectives for down there. But um, and, and I really I'm so sorry about that, that you won't get to hear from her perspective unless she pops back in with us. Um, so thank you for being here, Angelo. And uh, tell everybody what market you're in. I'm in the Orange Beach, Gulf Shores, actually all of Baldwin County, Pensacola. And we literally just signed up this week into the Destin MLS. Mm -hmm. Like we're just. As we're kind of growing, we're having clients ask, ask us, hey, we like how you do us over here. Can you represent us over here? Mm -hmm. So then we just look at the dollars. Can we, do we have the people in place? Do we have systems in place? Can we expand ourselves out to those areas? And right now we think we can, so we are. Well, way to go. We were actually just talking about knowing your numbers and uh, how Clarence has helped, you know, Gabrielle and um, really kind of um, get a perspective around that. Um, and uh, every year Clarence teaches a business planning and, you know, gets it down to the number, the number of appointments. And uh, it's so good. Um, right. So when he does it next year, you'll have to come up, Angelo. And oh. Jenny, on, that, on that knowing your numbers thing, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, I think some of us just kind of go through, um, you know, just doing our thing and not really paying attention to where we are. And I, I know personally, uh, several years ago, um, I didn't, you know, because I wasn't checking where I was during the year, I ended the year, you know, I had in the back of my mind that, hey, it'd be nice to hit $10 million. But I, I wasn't paying attention to where I was. And I ended the year. I, I looked sometime in December when it was too late to do anything about it. And I was at 9.6. Oh. You know? And so it was just like, if I had been tracking it and paying attention, you know, going into that fourth quarter, I might have hit the gas a little harder and maybe made a few more phone calls and done a few things to get. I mean, because at an average of, uh, at, at, you know, right now, my average sale is somewhere in the upper 200s. So that would have been you know, less than two deals, you know, or to cross that 10 million mark that year. So it's good to just know where you are. Well, and um, so it, and let's be in transparent um, COVID. I've thrown a lot of stuff out the window for a little bit, <laughs> but normally I have a whiteboard with everything that I can see going on. If you put that stuff in your phone, you're most likely not going to look at it, mm -hmm. um, but it helps you just like earning the icon award and seeing where you are. Like it'll help you make that next appointment, that next phone call, you know, pushing for that next piece of someone to serve. Um, same thing with knowing your numbers, just like that, that would help motivate you and put you over that 10 million if you were looking at it. Mm -hmm. So the easy way to do that is to grab a whiteboard and write that out. Um, is that kind of something you do too, Angelo? Uh, you know, for me, like when we look at knowing our numbers, like we're looking at that net number at the end of the month. So I think it really goes down to like, then the day, if you're, a, there are people that can go sell, but you're like a people person, you're probably a high eye mm -hmm. on the disc chart, but like you probably suck at uh, accounting, being organized, that sort of stuff. <laughs> like Nobody you know, on this channel. In the processes. So like, I, there I think was no it, danger of me being an engineer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not either. Like, like if I dial down into like what I'm good at, what I'm good at is getting on the phone, getting in front of people, making them feel comfortable and providing information and getting us to the point where we can, you know, write a listing agreement, write offers. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if you're like an agent at that 
five, six million dollar mark, you're kind of getting into the point where you almost need to make an investment into into a team member and somebody that can take some of that load off of you. Like I think like that's probably the most important part, or maybe it's your spouse who's working in corporate America and you've been depending on her income or their income to get you to this point where there's a certain point where two plus two equals three. I mean, one plus one <laughs> equals three, not one plus one equals two. And so like I always say, figure out what your strengths are, work on those, don't work on your weaknesses, hire out for all your weaknesses, like whether it's social media, whether it's, um, you know, running your schedule and making you an organized person, that stuff's going to blow you up way bigger. So when we look at numbers, like every month, we know whether we made money and we lost money and like, you're going to lose money some months and some months you're just going to kill it. Right. Uh, and if you're doing that, you know, you know where you are at every point in, in the year. And that's kind of, we used to not do that. We do it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, it, sort of like you were saying, getting, getting some help, you know, I, I waited too late on that. I mean, I, I think I, I'm a big advocate of new agents kind of not getting a transaction coordinator too soon, because I think for a new agent, it's important for you to get your hands dirty in the back end of the transaction because you learn a lot there and you right. learn how to solve problems. But I, you know, I am, you know, case study number one for waiting way too long on that one. Um, but it changed my life once I did and, and got somebody that could, could help me with, I can be out doing the things that bring in more money instead of ordering termite bonds and surveys and, you know, that kind of thing. And then I get back involved if there's a problem that needs to be solved or there's a, you know, uh, a a touch point that needs to be made or something, but the, the, the day-to-day things to get it to closing, I think that's, that's a big one um, as far as bringing on some member of the team to help you out. Well, I think it's helped you probably really good. Well, one, have a better give me some of my life back. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just, have a better just, lifestyle. Yeah, and, um, the year I did 86 transactions by myself with no transaction coordinator. Uh, I don't even want to think about having to do that again. <laughs> He's just recovering. <laughs> my head hurts. Thank you. Okay. I know, yeah. right? But something you just said, Angela, I think is super important. We always like want to focus on our weaknesses and beat ourselves up for, you know, trying to fit ourselves into that whole, gosh, if I was only organized Mm -hmm. and I I learned a long time ago, forget it. I'm not, I'm not going to be just let it go. And it's Mm -hmm. so free because I can Mm -hmm. say over here is something, you know, well, I told Zach the other day, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm really good at just a few things. (laughs) So I better stay right there and doing video is one, you know, and that's what I like, you know, to do. That's um, probably something in my skill set. And um, I love to write, but he's better at it than I am. Mm-hmm. So once I give him an angle, right, it's like he, he, ta- he can take that off of me. Um, uh, and um, just staying in touch with um, my people and loving on them and, you know, knowing what's going on in their lives. Those are kind of like the best skill sets. Um, and of course, the big picture overall stuff, which I think all four of us are big picture. But um, you said it right. Stay in your gifts and um, instead of beating yourself up and going against the grain, trying to make yourself you know, better over here that you're never going to be. You can't. You, and the other thing about it, I think, twofold, when you're a new agent or a newer agent, let's say you're at that, you know, one to two and a half million threshold where it's, it's starting time to get a little help. Don't be afraid of investing the money to get help, because I think sometimes people are afraid of giving up money. Uh, and I think that that's a mistake because, yeah. you know, you're not and you have to be honest with yourself. I think as real estate agents, you think you're good at everything. You have <laughs> to be honest. It's like you, you're not. You know, I can run the transaction better than anybody else. Well, I'm sure you can. But that's not what you should be doing. Right. And I think sometimes we just control. You know, we like to have our hands and everything. But you have to let go. And I think that's the that's the two things for me in the beginning. I was so afraid to hire somebody because I didn't want to take the money to invest in an agent, um, you know, to invest in somebody to help me out. But, you know, it's important. Know, but once you did, oh my God, you oh have just chorus. You're just like yeah. your element and your thing. Yes. And just a few years ago, a little bit more than a few years ago, you were just like struggling, trying to put the yeah. pieces and parts and you yeah. were, you know, probably putting the wrong people in the wrong parts. 
and then you were kind of going over and trying to take up their slack and do yours. Yeah. Um, it's free. Now your whole uh, uh, business is just, it just looks so much different. I'm grateful. Thriving. I mean, like, I think when you look at that and like Clarence, as you kind of got to that point, like you go from a new agent where you're, then you go maybe a year or two in, you're doing two or $3 million a year in transactions. All right. So usually year four or five, those kind of people go into that five to $7 million range. Mm -hmm. But like, that's kind of where you, you need to start thinking. I need to bring in somebody depending on where your price point is. Cause your bandwidth is getting eaten up. Yeah. But like, I know the mistakes I made was a, I didn't want to pay anybody enough money. Exactly. So you bring in, you pay somebody $10 an hour, you get $10 an hour. Help. <laughs> and look, they're going to leave you in a bigger wreck than when you, when they came in. And then if you wait too long, you're like a seagull. You chirp at them as you're coming in and out, That's right. but you don't give them the direction they need to <laughs> ensure their success for you. I've never like, been I've done that. I'm like horrible at it still. I like the I nautical can't. references from the beach. Yeah. <laughs> and then like the last thing is like, I'm a high eye and, and like, which is like outgoing kind of person. And I always want to see the positive in people. Mm -hmm. Like I know I don't need to be the first, I'll like look at anybody and go, I can fix that person. Yes, they, right. they can work in our system. I just, they just need to be weak. Like the reality is, is like you can't change somebody's personality type. So like, and I keep on referring to just test. Like if you're going to make a hire, spend some money, get, get a professional, it's like 150 bucks to have a good somebody that knows what they're doing perform that test. Mm -hmm. And look, you're closing five, seven million dollars a year. Just drop in the bucket to bring on the right person. Right. Like they'll tell you, like, what are you going to hire for? Well, I need a transaction coordinator. Well, like that's a high S systems kind of person. Mm -hmm. Like put that person in that. Place. Like if you need a executive assistant, that's a different kind of role. Uh, and that's how you scale up and that's how you get big. Um, yeah, that's, that's true. I agree with a lot of you were saying too, like you're trying to hire cheap and then bringing in people and you're like, hey, do this out the door. Yeah, and then they're playing on Facebook because yeah. they don't know what the hell you told them to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's not, it's not it's their fault, it's your fault. Too busy to come back and make sure that it's been a productive day. Um, and then at the end of the day, you're left with all the stuff to have to do. And I mean, you get mad, right? You're writing checks yeah. and having to do the work. So yeah. um, it is important that that first step of leverage is super, super important. And uh, Jennifer is a piece of our leverage is watching now. Uh, Jennifer Combs Vineyard. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, she is our amazing uh, broker assistant, assistant broker. Yeah, she's awesome. um, yes, she is. And always the best <sighs> positive attitude. So um, uh, before and a next cheerleader. Yes, she is. <laughs> Aileen is back. So, um, Chad, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions um, so that you can go be more productive during the day, too. <laughs> and uh, Aileen's going to come on. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, share with us, um, you know, we kind of know your philosophy. Oh, Y'all, one of the things I want to tell you is that Chad hit Icon at record speed and he had a goal to do it and he blew it out. So tell us about that first. Well, I... You, you know, I, I started looking at the ICON program and, and, you know, what the benefits are. And so, you know, I saw that part of it is part of your stock awards come from attending the shareholders conference and attending the EXP con conference in the fall. And so I joined in September and I'm thinking, OK, well, the shareholder conference is in mid-April. I need to hit ICON by the time I go to that. And um, so it was supposed to be in Orlando, what, starting April 19th or 20th or something. So I, I, I closed my final transaction to hit the number on April 15th. Um, so just, just, just at the time, you know, for that. So I was excited about that. That was, uh, you know, and, and it is when you've got something like that out there that, that's sort of out in front of you and, and you kind of say, Hey, this is something I want to hit. And this is when I want to hit it by, it really does kind of change your perspective and, and, and make you kind of step up and do a little bit more than you might do otherwise and kind of motivates you and pushes you. So, um, I mean, I, I knew based on my numbers that I'd done before joining the EXP, I knew I would hit the icon mark. Right. Um, if I didn't, I had more problems than, <laughs> than just not hitting the icon award because I'm kind of need to be there. But um, 
so I, I knew I would hit it. It was just a matter of, you know, when do I want to do it? And, you know, how quickly can I do it? And so that was, which was a little bit of a difference because I, you know, I, I joined in September, but I still had closings on the books with my previous company. So I didn't close my first transactions with EXP until the end of October. Um, and so it was a little bit of kind of, you know, uh, kind of behind the eight ball trying to get there, but, uh, and, and then going into the slower time of the year also, but, um, but it all worked out. It, well, it did. And so how does one have what 14 closings in April? Um, <laughs> a lot of hard work. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, a lot of marketing, hard work and, and just taking care of people. I mean, uh, my record is 20 in one month. Uh, I did that in May of 16. Um, so, I got a, my God over here in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, it, you know, it's just, um, you know, when it starts rolling, you know, you hear the, the old saying that, you know, activity breeds activity. I mean, it's inertia. You know, if you can get things going and get things moving, it's harder to stop it. And the flip side of that is when you're sitting there doing nothing and twiddling your thumbs, it's kind of hard to get going. So I try to not stop because I don't want to have to, you know, start the engine up again. Yeah. Okay. So that's real important if you're listening. And what he was saying is he had to build that momentum up and keep it going because when you stop to take care of all the problems that are surrounding a closing and you don't keep prospecting, then you're going to have those peaks and valleys, peaks yeah. and valleys, peaks and valleys. Hey, I remember as a new agent, I was probably my, it was probably my second year in real estate, man. I thought I had hit the mother load. I closed eight transactions one month and which was great. I mean, that's a big yeah. number. And on the split I was on, I mean, I think at that time, this was in, in about 98, 99, you know, I brought home, you know, I brought home now I, I didn't get to keep, but I had not learned those lessons yet. I brought home about $21,000 that month. You know, I didn't really factor in expenses and taxes and all that sort of stuff, man. I was buying golf clubs, I was going to the beach. I, I thought I had arrived and then I realized, uh Oh, there's nothing in the pipeline. <laughs> you know, I can get busy. So, you know, you, you do, you have to kind of keep prospecting and keep things coming in. Cause just cause you have one good month, you, you might have a really bad one, you know, two months down the road and you got to even that out with what you did a couple months before, if you don't keep it going. Well, um, before um, Aileen pops in and shares with um, her tips with us, a couple of things that you do for marketing you want to share with us. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, social media is big. Um, I learned that years ago when I got my first referral from, from uh, Facebook, from somebody I went to high school with and I had not seen in 20 years uh, that referred somebody that he worked with because we had reconnected on, on Facebook. And I was like, hmm, this is free and it's making me money. <laughs> you know, so uh, so that that's big. I mean, just be and, and I try to just be real and authentic. I don't do anything special. It's just, you know, being me. Um, and then um, I do a lot of direct mail. Um, you know, I, I'm the top selling agent in Chelsea, Alabama, which is a small community suburb of Birmingham and Shelby County. And um, I, I've done, uh, you know, I, I do, I try to, to stay in front of people uh, with direct mail with um, I've got a couple of billboards, uh, things like that. Just being active and visible in the community. Um, I think, uh, I think Nolly Williams is the one I heard say, you know, be a local celebrity in your, in your town. I'd never really heard it put that way before, but that's, not that that's how I view myself, but that's mm -hmm. just keeping your your name and and your reputation out in front of people, um, you know, constantly. And it pays off. You know, now your reputation has to be a good one for that to work. So. <laughs> yes, it does. But everybody does know him in our town. We live in the same town. And uh, um, with his billboards matched with his direct mail. Now, if you're brand new, don't don't spend money on billboards because yeah. you have to have some sort of uh, signs out there, some sort of leverage to help you with that. Um, um, and he's got that. He's got all this uh, experience. He's the number one agent in the town. And he does that by, you know, relationship building, knowing who people are and staying highly visible. Visibility is super, super, super important. Yeah, you can't so. disappear. That's right. <laughs> so thank you so much for being sure. with us. Happy to be here. It was fun.
And uh, Mary Martin said um, uh, that you told her that <laughs> could punch, um, they could punch you in the face if you didn't make it in time. So, yeah. when we, know, so two, two, two of my mentees the, 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 that I'm working with, I, I told them if I didn't make my goal of icon by mid-April, they could punch me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he avoided it. So, Thank you so much. And y'all, it's Chad Beasley. If you want to reach out to him, uh, send him a message on Facebook. Um, he is going to go over your $20 million uh, this year. Yeah, I'm a little over. I think I'm a little over 12 so far. Um, not counting what's closing here at the end of May. Which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, always happy to, to help again. So uh, reach out to him. And thanks again, Chad, for being here. Thank you. See you, too. See you guys. All right. Hey, we're going to bring on Aileen. Okay, can we can we hear you now? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm so sorry. We started with um, Aileen, and uh, she was having difficulties in the last second. We were having all kinds of difficulties um, with her audio. So, so glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, um, we're just excited that um, you know we can share you know tips and strategies and marketing ideas um, that it took for each of us to become uh, icons in Alabama. You know, um, they're going to be a lot more because we've had so many people join. They're going to be a lot more this year. So um, I, I am thrilled to have been, uh, I think number number five. <laughs> <laughs> so behind y'all, um, and uh, you know. What do you feel um, has motivated you um, uh, to get that icon award? Uh, you know, I, I don't. In the beginning, I was just trying to build my business. I mean, I was just trying to build a, a solid business. And every year I was trying to to grow upon the year previous to it. And, and now 16 years in the business that's what I've done every year. I've just built and built and built it at Angelo and I talk all, all the time about scaling up and, and growing our business. And, um, it doesn't happen overnight. And that is, that's a big misconception that newer agents get when they see us is they think that, um, you know, it happened quickly and it doesn't, um, it, it's something that you work on and you grow upon every year. You're trying to build and build and build. And so, you know, I always tell them, you know, get a mentor, get a get a coach, join a team. You've got to be able to generate enough leads to to have enough sales to start building up a repeat and referral. I mean, that's, you know, where we all are in our career right now talking to these agents is is we're all working on repeat and referrals. Well, we've built it up over the years. So in order to get to that point, you've got to have enough you know, ways of generating leads to close, to build the relationship, to get the repeat referral. So that's, that's the thing for me is I just, every year I try to get better and better and build upon that and um, grow my database, obviously do it the right way and, and just work really hard to get the repeat and referrals, which, you know, that's, that's where I am today. Well, you're, you're so right. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, it takes time. You know, Chad's been in the business 23 years. I've been in the business 23 years. And shoot, I just started selling again. Um, <laughs> Clarence is awesome at being able to scale. You know, once he saw like how to do it, you really scaled up this year mm -hmm. and um, uh, have made massive growth in not only your team, but your production and team level too. Um, so I think that's super important. Um, you know, Angelo, you uh, um, have got a couple of unique marketing strategies that you use. And one are your um, videos with um, local businesses. You want to talk about that for a little bit? So, like, that kind of came out of the, like, need to create referrals. And I'll tell you, my wife thought it was the dumbest thing ever. When I started, she goes, you should just get on the phone and call property owners. I hate cold calling. Uh, it's awkward for me. And I'm awkward on the phone sometimes. So, like, I just went to people I knew. And I remember when I did my first one, I couldn't believe how many people watched it. So I was eating at the sandwich shop later on that day. I was like, I want to do this video. And so at the time, it was really easy to boost videos on the on our for real estate page. So I was just like, give me a $25 gift certificate. I can give it away to people that make comments and it'll grow the, the boot, it'll grow the post organically. And then I could 
give something back to them. And the tactic there was to really get to know the business owner because I felt like there was a better opportunity there for them to send me business than just random business coming in off off of Facebook. But one day some guy stopped me in a parking lot. I double sided a deal, it paid me sixty-seven thousand dollars. And I think at that point I was like a hundred dollars in on Facebook. So like light bulb goes off. All right. We're just gonna go all in on this. The key to its consistency, like I'll tell you, I'm not Mr. Consistent. Like we'll go through like I think all real estate agents, we're all like this. We go through a period where we're doing everything perfectly. <laughs> And then one day it just all falls apart for three to four weeks. And then you just got to start it over. Don't beat yourself up. But like the key is you're providing value, value, value. Like social media game is jab, 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 left hook. So like that's just, you know, I do a fishing report. I do a couple podcasts. I'm like, just what I can, can I do to bring value? And then I'll drop you a listing in on you. So like we can build that relationship through social media and that's good for two to three deals every year. Our price points are really nice here at the beach. So, uh, and it's just building brand. I mean, people, it, it's all part of a p bigger picture. Like you're connecting with them on a personal level. You're connecting with them on Facebook. You're connecting with business owners in your community. It, it's all pieces of that puzzle. And then when you do that, your business is just going to blow up from there. But the key is consistency. It has a long tail. So it sticks around a long time. It helps you in the search engine. Um, me coaching agents for so many years. In fact, I was coaching somebody um, who was in y'all's market. Um, and uh, he noticed that he was getting some, um, you know, activity on YouTube and uh, gave him a list of topics. And it was Mother's Day. And I said, go to the Grand Hotel. He's like, oh, my gosh, my buddy um, uh, is the manager there. And uh, he went there, interviewed him. The lighting was terrible. The audio was probably worse. And uh, he got <laughs> two leads out of it. And it was awesome. And uh, um, so it, 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 it's just such a way of giving back. Um, also by promoting the other small businesses. So um, I'm a huge fan of that. I've, I, you know, always been happy to see you do that. Um, Clarence, you do live videos mm -hmm. um, and uh, you'll do fun stuff. He'll do like, this is what's cooking on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, people participate that and just really love it. Or you'll do like winning Wednesday yeah. and give a tip. Um, and you are just such positivity on Facebook and you just break up all of that crap. Yeah. Um, so thank you for that. Yeah. And I appreciate it for those because I used to really freak out about video and social media. Like I was like, I hate it. I'm scared of the red button, you know. And so what's funny, what came to me as you, as you were talking, Angelo, I was looking at the Michael Jordan, you know, the, uh, the little ESPN special they've had. And if you hadn't watched it, definitely check it out. But he, they were out shooting the basketball and, and the guy, you know, they were shooting and he missed. And Michael comes in, boom, one shot banks at half court. And they was like, wow, how do you do like dang? He said, you know, I never consider about missing a shot that I hadn't taken yet. And so I thought about that. I said, wow, how many shots have we not taken because we was afraid of missing? How many phone calls that we didn't pick up, you know, because we were afraid, like I was going to say the wrong thing. Take the shot. You know, why worry about a shot? Why worry about missing a shot you hadn't even taken yet? And I thought that was powerful. And so if anybody's struggling with social media, take the shot. Don't worry about what you're going to say. If your hair is right, just like Jenny said, the video is messed up. Shoot the shot, man. And, and, and whatever happens after that, let it happen. You know, I think that's important. Well, and like um, Ebony, uh, your lady, she yeah. said, um, you know, in case you haven't realized this, everybody already knows what you look like. <laughs> True. <laughs> that was the best thing ever. Cause like when people start worrying about, Oh no, you know, I don't look yeah. good. My are showing I'm fat, but, you know, yeah. my are going out. And she's like, they already know it. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's I nice like, to be afraid of that. And I like the Facebook live. There's no editing. Like you can go do that and you hit post and you're done. You just go, I don't even watch mine. Oh um, no, don't watch it. <laughs> Cause I'm hitting it. I already know what I said. You'll never. My wife watches it, and critiques them. And then, <laughs> like, oh. That's why we have our spouses. Don't let us know. Go. 
Um, but Aileen, do you use a lot of um, social media? Uh, I am, I'm getting, um, a little bit more consistent with it this year. It has definitely been something that, um, uh, I knew I needed to, to get more consistent with. So I've been, I've made an effort to do that this year. Um, in general, no, I have not been huge on social media. I have seen you do some videos at properties before. Now that I'm pretty consistent with. I try and do a weekly walkthrough of a video, whether it's um, something that I put under contract or something that I've just listed. And, it, and if I don't have that content, it, it, a lot of times I may be doing a virtual tour for another client because a lot of our business, it, they don't live here. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, if they've already come into town and they've already gone back home, you know what they're looking for, you can go out and shoot video for them. And I've sold a number of properties that way. So. Cool. Well, and, and it, I mean, if you're selling properties that way, that's a great thing to do. So do you have some other favorite marketing strategies that you like? Um, you know, uh, other than working really, really hard to keep in touch with my clients and, and doing an annual client appreciation party, I do do some mail marketing. Uh, I, I will target certain areas or certain types of people that I want to mail to, listings that I'm trying to get, and I will mail market um, and then... And then I do a really good job of keeping in touch with past clients. That, that's where I put a lot of my time and effort into. Well, that's all. And I know Angelo does that as well. That's um, kind of like your thing. And I love your birthday idea. Um, Angelo, do you want to share that with you? So like, you're right. It's like at a certain point, you doing an internet lead based business, it's a 50, 50, you know, it's 50% spend to take 50% revenue. It's a very expensive way to operate. So like cost to procure business, is it going to be your biggest cost to a certain point? And then like, if you can switch to that referral based business, like after a few years, so what you want to do, and we do this with all our clients with our sphere of influence, we have an all about you form birthday, spouse's birthday, anniversary, kids, pets, favorite food, cocktail, all that stuff. <clears throat> what that allows us to do is like we do the birthday box. So most people don't even get birthday cards from their brothers or sisters, their best friends. And so we just, I think you said wow factor. We want to have that wow factor throughout the process. Mm -hmm. So even after you've done a piece of business with you, you get a little hostess cupcake, you get some matches, you get uh, uh candle blower and an instruction manual on how to wish yourself a happy birthday, which I think that's like a very unique touch. We do anniversary candles. And I will tell you one of the things that we've brought in this year that like to me has just trumped all of that. And I want to do it on a monthly basis, but right now we're doing bi-monthly is what we call our letter of the heart. And so that has nothing to do with our real estate business but it's totally like where we're coming from as a person. It's an opportunity to be very vulnerable with the people around you. It makes you super relatable. So like we just sent ours out from, uh, from dealing with COVID and like, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like I was going through every human emotion possible sometimes twice before lunch. Right. And I think that that's like a very <laughs> relatable thing. For me. And so we kind of talked about like, what that process was like and like even the good difficulty of writing that letter like from where we were at and then like kind of the process of hey we went from like mid-march to it just seemed like it was a blur for me till about april and then we just like rededicated ourselves where when we just worked on our calling all our fear our past clients and just having really great conversations and that process i mean we were laughing we were crying we were venting to each other and it really kind of dialed us in with people and we weren't calling to get business, but people were kind of like, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. So we, now we got a whole list of like kind of long-term leads, what I would call warm, but like I've gotten three or four phone calls from that letter. Hey, come by, bring some cards. We're wanting the list. It's just a, I wish I would have been doing it sooner. And it's tough. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I don't write well. Like, and I write well, like under that deadline. So like the night before I knew that we committed to like sending this thing out in the mail, like I'm just writing away. So I don't know. I'm going to gramble on if you let me. 
<laughs> You're fine. I actually have a question for Aileen. Um, and Frankie says, please, uh, uh, he apologizes that he hopes he doesn't, he didn't butcher your name. But um, uh, when you stay in touch with past clients, do you email, text, call, or do that in person? It's all of the above. So I have a monthly um, newsletter that I send out uh, called The Beach in the Bay that I send out to all my clients. And I actually had a client, uh, I was on the phone with him, just called him up out of the blue. Um, to say hello to him. And he he's an older guy, you know, and he said, Aileen, I've been in business a long time. And I got to tell you, you really do business the right way. He said, I love your newsletter. Um, I read it every every time you send it. And I, I so appreciate how you've kept in touch with me. And he said, um, I'm going to be down next week. I'd like to go have lunch with you. So um, and that was just like I said, I just picked up the phone and called him. Um, I don't typically uh text but i do uh, every spring i do a client appreciation party or I have the last two years my third was canceled over the pandemic this year but i pick up the phone and personally call every single client uh they get a uh, a a personal invitation in the mail they get the email invitation and then i personally call every single one of them to invite them to the party so all of the above on that um now if they engage me via text message, which, you know, happened just the other night, hey, Aileen, just wanted to reach out to you, something, something, something. And, and then, I, of course, I respond back via text message. But typically, it's it's calls and emails that I use to keep in touch with them. So, well, that's good, Frankie. Um, if you have uh, another question, please uh, type it up and uh, we'll make sure you get it answered. Um, you know, Clarence, you've got, um, I know you stay in touch with your past clients, you use Facebook Live, but you've got a lot of online lead generation systems mm -hmm. too. Um, you want, you care to share with us what you're using? Yeah. So that's what I was saying. We do uh, Google. Like I said, we do a lot of pay-per-click and we do some Facebook running ads on Facebook. And again, it's just keeping that brand awareness uh, in addition to what we're doing with our spirit people to turn those people into clients. Uh, and even if you don't really, and a lot of times people think that Google leads are, I'm trying to get somebody to buy something at that point in time. It's establishing a relationship before they make a decision to buy. And so that's what people have to understand. It's a different mindset when you're, people think where you're investing in leads, it's about how many leads can I buy so I can convert them and like sell them a house. And that's true. I understand that. But it's really about getting in front of people to build a relationship. So at the time they do decide to buy, they think of you because you've had that nurturing period from that 12 to 18 months of, you know, of emails, calls, because I'm still doing the same spear contact with the clients that are coming in and registering. So I'm still going to send you a video, still going to check in on you, how your kids are doing. I'm still in that same mode. It's not, hey, you want to buy a house? Okay, call me next month when you want to buy a house. We're not taking that approach. We want to make sure that your, your, you know, your search has been customized. Are you receiving the homes that you're looking for? Do, are you up to date on the values of the communities that you're looking in? Do you need a free home buyer report? Do you need a free uh, you know, 10 point inspection list of what things you should look for in a home inspection. So we're providing value from that point. And once that client is ready to make that choice, they are thinking of you because you've been there, you know, and it's a no obligation. We're not predators. It's free. And, and we just allow them to to comfortably come on site and work with a professional. So. Well, what? <laughs> Zag said that was so well put. <laughs> I'm glad that he's here, kind of hearing like all of our perspectives, yeah. you know, um, because I'm sure we're all wired uh, very similarly. Yeah. Um, so do, um, you know, as a member of this panel, do you also invest in real estate? Um, Clarence, I'll let you answer that first. Yes, uh, heavily. I love it. And actually, that's how I really got my license. Um, I started buying properties first and ended up I was working with an agent, ended up, you know, selling the property. And um, we ended up I was I bought some other properties and I, I got a I bought a decent sized piece of property and I found the property literally. And basically they wrote it up and they, they made a good check. And so I was like, I need to get my license. Like I, I need to consider that because I could have leveraged that more into the investment. Well, during 2007, 2008, the economy started shifting. And so with that, I started like really focusing on selling and still investing in real estate. Uh, but we kept buying. I think we had a, a year that we didn't we kind of, you know, didn't do anything because it was hard to deal with banks for lending and what have you. But anyway, uh, but yes, we still actively invest a lot with purchasing properties and putting them back on the market and even holding them. So I think it's very important that you should do that every agent. I mean, even if it's one a year, 
um, it's it's important to do that. So I need yeah, I was gonna message you too. I need a concrete guy. So we'll talk later. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I know. I saw that you needed yeah. that, and I meant to ask Jay, but um, yeah. I'll get you. I'll get you a concrete right. guy. So, um, Aileen, do you do you invest in real estate? Personally, yes, I'm heavily invested in real estate. Um, I'm I am big on rental properties. Uh, for me, I have a, a long term plan to build a fairly decent sized rental portfolio. Um, mainly because you know, number one, uh, it's it's what I know so much about. Spent 16, 17 years studying the market every single day. So I feel confident uh, with with that investment. And then number two, just being in our business, uh, you know, you guys all know we sell till we die or you join EXP and, <laughs> and, 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 and come up with some other ways to generate revenue aside from just selling. So that was always a long-term plan for me was rental property. So yes, heavily, heavily invested in real estate. Do you do um, any Airbnb properties or are you mostly long-term rental? Mostly long-term, but I am actually working right now as we talk to move some pieces into some short-term rental properties. Good for you. All right. So, Angela? Uh, I do have some. I'm wanting to get out of the rental management. <laughs> like, you know, oh, I don't manage any of them myself. <laughs> well, we, we, you know, here's my take on it, right? What you take in from, and that's a great retirement plan. I don't, I don't like doing rental management. It's very, very work oriented, like lots of heavy lifting to me, lots of stuff that I don't want to, I could just go sell property and make more money. I feel like. And so like when I think about like investing in real estate, so probably my best investment was just something I bought for myself that I want to build on. And I think the best investment, not just for real estate agents, but people in general, if you can afford it is a high end piece of luxury real estate. A, it's going to get you motivated every day to go work hard. It's going to be something you can be proud of. I mean, like, and like if we're really in the relationship business, the best place to entertain people is at your own house. And if you have a show piece, then, then that just more power to you. Like that's where my brain's at. Uh, but everybody's different, right? Like I have friends that, I deal with a fair number of builders and we find lots for them and they, and they build and flip. That's one aspect of it. Some I have friends that have this giant rental portfolio, like that's their aspect of it. So everybody's got a different take on it. Like I've owned a couple of them right now and we sold one earlier this year. I've got two more. I want to get off my books. Once they get up a little bit more, sayonara. And my wife hates it. She's like, it's cash flow, but I'm like, yeah, you know what? make six thousand dollars a year off this thing i can just do <laughs> one more piece of business with this piece of real estate and make six thousand dollars a year off of it so i just think it's how however you want to skin that cat no doubt. well and i understand you saying that we got rid of all of our rentals at um one time and then we got a, a short-term rental and um you know it pays us four thousand a month as opposed to you know what we could probably get is about twelve fifty a month uh, long term. So uh, it is a job, um, and my husband is good at that. I'm not. I started it, and it was my hot, my idea. He pissed me for it, and now he's like, "Let me take it over." He loves it. He's super. Um, oh, I started it. I was all in. <laughs> I was going to make it an offer before even consulting my wife. <laughs> <laughs> April God lover. Uh, so um and we build and flip uh mostly. Um you know, my husband's a home builder. So so happy to be with a company that lets us do that. Mm -hmm. where we can sell our own stuff. And uh, I can't imagine working for a company that you couldn't. Um so the reason I ask that is because we are icon thinkers. Um people who achieve icon are gonna be thinking about things differently and we should be investing in our own business. Yeah. If we ask someone else to invest in it or ask someone else to buy it, we should be the first ones to, to want to do that and lead the way. So um, Frankie says, Clarence, as far as Google leads to you, uh, 
pay to have your name search when someone gets you on Google. So he, he wants to know a little bit more about what do you mean by Google leads? So that's it. So it's just like if somebody Google real estate in Birmingham, real estate for sale in Birmingham, if they're generally like searching a term, then you have on the back of like YouTube and like Jenny was saying, when you do social media, you could put wording in back in the background that allow your video to pull up to the search. And then that, of course, you have a place where they capture, you know, if they go so far and you use it through your KV core as well. But, you know, it's one of those type of tools. It's the same general, you know, and that's the thing about it. People don't it's, it's, it's just that simple. It's it, we make it difficult, you know, and it's not as hard as what you think, really. I mean, and so once that happens, they fill out a form and that's when you just call and introduce yourself. But again, going back to it, just making sure that you're coming from a like building a relationship, not just about selling a house or anything like that. Right. That's why I think most people fail with it. They think it's not good. Like I bought some leads and it didn't work because most people call instant like, hey, you want to buy a house? And it's almost like going out on a date the first night and say, hey, you want to get married? It's like, do you even know my name? <laughs> and so it's not giving that opportunity to nurture. And, and that's why I think a lot of agents miss it with that. So. I agree. And so Frankie, one of my listings came from um, Google click campaign that Zach had, had put together this year um, and from a lady who was not on social media. So mm. she didn't, she'd never seen anything of mine on social. Um, but uh, OK, so um, let's go around before we sum up. Uh, Clarence, any other words of encouragement or tips for for anyone who is looking to get into real estate, struggling with real estate, thriving and wants to do more? Definitely. So number one, too, you said this about investing and I promise this is not a plug for EXP. I, I'm not plugging. I'm saying, though, really, if we you're if, we well, were, well, I'm, I'm just being honest, I, I want because it's just if you if you're selling real estate and this is what you're going to be doing, yeah. you, sh you should invest in a place where you are. You can receive rewards above selling. You can yeah. invest in stock. You can purchase stock for below market value. You could be awarded stock for the same work you're doing. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's, it's like. Why not get a two for, for one, <laughs> you know, a three for one, a three for you, one, yeah, a three for one, you know. And so just really encourage that that's not about recruiting. It's a smart business decision. So literally take a look at it if you haven't. Don't take advice or you heard from what others are saying. Dig into it. Get your own information for yourself. I'm glad I did. And I meant that if I had done this eight years ago, it'd be totally different. So excuse me, the dogs are up, kids moving around. So you might hear some. But I just jotted a few notes just wrapping up definitely set a goal and what we're talking about today is like chad was saying is set a goal so you know your numbers uh it is important that like he said look how quickly he turned around from october to april and how much he sold when he was saying if i had known my numbers i would have killed 10 million right so set a goal and know your number and inspect what you expect so don't just set the goal make sure you're looking to see each month are you on track and if you're off track so make sure you're doing that i put focus on the 20 percent do the things that matter. And Angela, I took that from you. Focus on the things that you're good at, what your God given talents are, because that's why God made you that way. Stay in your sweet spot and stop struggling, trying to do the things you're not good at. Hire it, find great people that are God given talent in that area and let them be a blessing in that area for you. Okay. So do that. And again, add leverage at an early, like add leverage early. Don't wait until the last minute where you're overwhelmed or you got too much going on. Add leverage at a point before you need it. If you look at football teams and I love sports, this is a roll tide country. OK, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I had to squeeze that in. You can't be on the Alabama call and can't have some football. Come on. <laughs> but if you look at teams in football, you're always bringing in young talent before you need it. And we used to question them. People like, wow, you got the best. You have the best running back in the world. Why is Nick Saban keep buying, getting all the number one running backs? But Nick Saban knew, oh, oh, and, and today I'm already planning for championship six years from now. So I need that running back with fresh legs coming in. I need to get, I always got to have the best on the bench. And I think that's important for us as agents. We wait until we need help or our quarterback is injured. And now we're like, all right, coach, I got to get back in the game. I, I, I got to <laughs> put me in, you know, and so stay away from that. And, and above all, work hard. And I think I hear this from all of you guys. You get up every day and you really work. You, this is not something you treat as a side business. You're very focused about what you're doing. You work really hard. And that's what I think a lot of new agents don't realize. You may see people on social media. Don't compare yourself to what you see people are doing on social media. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of hard work going on in order to see those closing pictures and those soul signs. 
you didn't see all the falling apart and what had to happen in order to get that. So work, that work hard. Statements you know. of the whole. <laughs> <right there. laughs> get up in the move in the morning and, and and go at it. You know that's all. So that's it. That's my little notes I had put us going through. Well, I love it, Aileen. Do you have um, some additional encouragement or tips? Yeah, uh, three things. Um, and, and Clarence hit on this. I, I think goal setting is is probably one of the most important things you can do. Um, set the goals, written goals. Uh, you'd mentioned a white uh, dry erase board earlier, Jenny. I, I'm a big fan of having one of those up too. Um, have your goals where you can see them. Write them down. That's number one. Number two, um, you need to get either a mentor, a coach. Mm -hmm. You've got to start looking at getting some some help from people who've been there, uh, consistent help. Um, I took 100 Days to Greatness in 2009 uh, by Brian Buffini, and that changed the the rest of my career because I started implementing the things that I learned into that course in into my um, business. And that's where, you know, I started to take off in 2012. But but I took that class in 2009 and started building on it 9, 10, 11 when the market was terrible. You know, a lot of people didn't do anything during those times. I was building on it. So by the end of 2012, I started really reaping those benefits. It didn't happen overnight, as I said. Um, and then number three, there's so many niches in real estate. Find your niche. You, you don't have to do it one specific way. There's, there's 20 different ways to be successful in real estate, but you do need to figure out what, um, what aligns with you, what works for you. Because as Angelo mentioned, we're not good at everything. Find what you're good at. Find your niche and then hit that lane and take it. Um, and that's where you'll be successful. Good stuff. Thank you so much. You're so right. So, Angeline, what you got for us? I mean, like, whenever I'm on one of these calls or about, around a bunch of really great real estate bonds, like, you could write down a full legal pad of stuff but that comes from this. And if you're watching that, maybe you've done that. So, like, what's always been the killer for me is when I do that, I come back and I'm like, raw, ready to go. But then, like, I don't have any plan. And so I'm like, we should implement all these things. And then two weeks later, we're back doing the exact same thing that we were prior to that. So, like, I'm a giant fan of, like, picking out the one to three things mm -hmm. because we work in really 90-day cycles. As, our, as a, if you look at the study of human brains, it's like the max we're going to be able to do. So pick out the one to three things. And... Uh, if you have team members, you can delve some of that out, but everybody should have something in 90 days that you're going to have implementing your business. It's just you, 90 days. So that's four big things that you want to implement your business. You do that over the course of a year. You do that over the course of five years. Think about where your business is right now and where it would be in the future. So like, I think that that's the easiest way to implement. And I'm a big believer in coaching. I pay somebody to coach me. I think it brings several things. I always tell people I felt like I was in a room with a thousand light switches and I needed to figure out the order of which they need to be flipped. It'll take you forever and it'll cost you a fortune. Coaching ain't cheap, but it's a great investment. It creates some competition between you and your fellow students, which I think like is for me is the major driver. It creates um, it shows you exactly how to do it and what to do, but it accountability, like we're the real estate agents, I think the world's worst about being accountable to ourselves and to our spouses. We all preach it, but we don't do it unless somebody's sitting there cracking the whip on us a lot of times. And that's why great football teams have great coaches. Those people have systems and plans. You have competition. You have accountability. You bring all three of those together. You can't help but blow up. Well, and I believe in coaching because I did it for 10 years <laughs> uh, and uh, still do some of it. But uh, I can tell you this for accountability, especially with agents. Um, everybody says they want it and uh, agents will run from it. So um, I at the minute that you give it to them. So um, you have to be accountable to yourself. Um, yes, there is someone that you may pay to be accountable to. Don't put your spouse in that position or situation because that will never work. Um, uh, 
but you can be accountable to yourself. And that was going to be one of the things that I wanted to, to share with you is um, I have a form. I, I created a game out of it called my six figure day and you can calculate your productive points. Um, you want to know what the outcome of your day is going to be. Sometimes your outcome of the day is not have anything to do with about work. You want, you want to wake up and that outcome is I want peace today. Or I want, you know, to go play today um, uh, and, and um, you know, make sure everything lines up to that. But you can be productive by using um, this uh, very fun My Six Figure Day. And uh, as long as you get over 100 points every day, you know, you were like, bam, I did my work. And you could you could actually scr uh, scratch those points off in two hours if you want to. Mm -hmm. Me, I tend to do it from, you know, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> we uh, can't be looking around every uh, where else for accountability. And because that's where we'll start blaming people and using that as excuse. Well, so-and-so didn't hold me accountable. Got to hold yourself accountable. And that's for anybody listening who wants to set a big goal. Um, also, I believe um, what you've all said about goal setting, um, totally into it. You got to look at it every day. You got to see it, visualize it, breathe it, know you're going to do it. And so many things will come into your world that um, you didn't actually make happen. Um, you're just taking advantage of that opportunity when you have that goal and that vision and know where you're going. So that's super important too. Um, the other things that I can say is, and I'm terrible about this, so I'm um, almost being a hypocrite by saying it, but um, <laughs> uh, the quicker you can forgive yourself for mistakes, um, and I will beat myself up for mistakes, and I don't care how many transactions I've been involved in, there are going to be mistakes that are going to be made. The quicker you can say, okay, fall on the sword and move forward, then um, uh, the more successful you're going to be. If the, the if your mindset is down, beating yourself up, then you can't take advantage of new opportunities that come your way. So um, I would say that those are the, the things other than investing in real estate uh, that uh, definitely recommend. And find the lead gen stuff that works for you. You heard everybody has a different style here on this call. And we all kind of, some of us do all the same things. And uh, some of us have kind of found, like Aileen said, our niches and uh, do what's fun for you because people are attracted to that energy, that light, that, you know, when you're having fun, they want to be a part of it. Um, and one thing that I can guarantee is every time I see Clarence, he is having fun. I don't care what it is. I don't even care if he is mad and pissed off at something. He's <laughs> still gonna find the beauty in it, and uh, I love that about you. So I just want to thank you know everybody for being here. And uh, again, if you're watching this and you want to reach out to anybody, we, we all have very helpful hearts. We're happy to help you, and we're all on Facebook. So uh, I appreciate y'all as icons. And if there's anything that I can personally do for y'all, please um, let me know because I want to see you get your trophies again this year and your stock awards. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Thank you Jenny. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jenny. See you.